Hello, my friends. I'm Clover, and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku. And today, um, me and my cat are solving Short Day Long Puzzle by Philip Newman. Come here, baby. Get in my lap. You can't... I, hey, you don't even know how to solve Sudoku, let alone this one. Because this looks like a little bit of a spicy guy. I have not tried this one before starting this video. This is an irregular Kropke pairs Sudoku. Uh, and it is also 0 to 9 instead of the typical 1 to 9. So you see it has 10 rows and 10 columns and 10, 10 cell regions. So we're going to be placing the digits 0 through 9 in each row, column, and region. And some of the regions are kind of these wiggly, irregular shapes, but they still just need to have 0 through 9 in them. Okay. We also have some white and black circles in the grid separating pairs of digits. Wherever you see a black circle, the two digits on either side of it are in a 1 to 2 ratio, so one of them is twice the other. And wherever you see a white circle, the digits on either side of it are consecutive, so one of them is one greater or less than the other. So let's try. Oh, and um, also, it's mentioned in the rules, but there's no negative constraint here, um, meaning that just because you don't see a black circle or a white circle, that doesn't necessarily mean that those two cells aren't in a 1 to 2 ratio or aren't consecutive. You don't know anything about other pairs of adjacent digits that don't have clues. So 0 is definitely going to be next to 1, and then 1 is going to be next to 2. And 2 is in a 1 to 2 ratio with two different digits, 1 and 4, and we've already used the 1. So I'm going to place a 4 right there. 1 is only in a 1 to 2 ratio with a single digit, which is 2. And now this needs to be either a 0 or a 2, but because I have a 2 in the region already, that's going to be a 0. Now I'm trying to focus on these black dots because those tend to be more restricted in these puzzles. So 2 has to go either down to 1 or up to 4, and there's a 1 in the region already. And then 4 is going to have to go up to 8, which will be consecutive with 7 or 9. And because there is a 9 in the row, we're going to make that a 7. So now we have three digits in a row here that are all in a 1 to 2 to 1 to 2 ratio. So these, I believe, need to be 2, 4, and 8, because the only other possibility is that they are 1, 2, and 4. And we've already used 1. So this has to be a 4, and then the two digits here are 2 and 8, and there's already a 2 in the second column. That tells us these are going to be 3, 5, 6, and 7. Now we have another 1 to 2 ratio, but we can't use 1, 2, or 8, which means we can't use 4 either because we can't do 2 and 4, and we can't do 4 and 8. So this must be the only other pair of digits where one of them is twice the other in Sudoku, which is 3 and 6. So I'm going to eliminate 3 and 6 there. And then these are going to be from 0, 4, 5, and 7. And I'll make a quick elimination or two here. 0 can't be next to 3 or 6, and 0 can't share a row with another 0, so this has to be our 0. And I think that's all I get to eliminate at this moment. Okay. These two digits are in a 1 to 2 ratio, and they don't use 1 or 2. So they're either going to be 4 and 8, or possibly 3 and 6. That wasn't very helpful. Similarly, the same digits are eliminated here. So these are going to be either 3 and 6 or 4 and 8. These are from 3, 5, 6, 7, because that's all I have left to put in that row. How about we look right here? So we need three digits in a row, and we've used 1, 2, and 9. So we can't use a 0, because 0 would have to immediately go up to 1. So we could do 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 7, 6, 7, 8. I'm just marking the central digit, and that doesn't seem terribly restricted either. Interesting. What are we going to do with this puzzle? There might be some Sudoku that we need to do to get this to yield its secrets. All right, this needs to be either 3 and 6 or 4 and 8. And that can't be an 8 because there's an 8 in the row, so that's not going to be a 4. And I'm scanning right now looking for naked or hidden digits that have just popped up from the Sudoku that I've done so far. This guy can't be a 7 because I have a 7 marked in the column at this point. 
Hmm. I can't put zeros in any of these cells, I've just noticed, because I have zeros here, here, and here. So if I want to place a zero in this column, which I do, I'm going to have to put it here. And that does something useful. I have zeros there and there, and a zero there. So this is now going to be a zero. I wonder if I can place all of the zeros at this point. So I still need a zero in this region, and I still need a zero in this region, and I still need a zero in this region. So I have zeros here, here, and here. And that rules zero out of these cells, so zero is going to live over here. And zero can't be in a one to two ratio with another digit because it's just in a one to two ratio with itself and we can't du duplicate it in the same region. So our zero goes into one of those cells. How about in this region down here? So we have zeros that rule zero out of these cells and this cell. And so the only places we could technically put zero in this region would be here or here. But we already know we have a zero in this column that's in this region. So the zero is there, there is going to go right here. And then for this region, we can rule zero out of these cells and zero has to be here. Oh, and I have a zero right here. So that must be a zero. I didn't even notice that. So then zero goes up to one and then one gets doubled to two. So that's some progress. Okay, that was the right thing to do um, to kind of look at where individual digits can go, which is kind of interesting because that's how we ended up cracking our last Philip Newman puzzle, the non-consecutive Sudoku. Okay, let's see. Which other digits are looking restricted at this point? So I'm looking at ones. I am able to rule ones out of these cells in this region. So there is a one in one of those two cells. I can rule ones out of some cells in this region, so there is a one here or here. That's not incredibly useful. I think I've already just about, I haven't quite placed all the twos. This is the only position for a two in this kind of top central region up here. And this is the only position for a two in this region here. So this must be a one or a three. And because there is a one in the row, I'm gonna place a three there. And now this needs to be either a one or a four to be in the correct ratio with two. So that's not gonna be a three. This isn't gonna be a three, which means that will not be a six. Okay. One can't go in any of these cells in this region. And because there's a one here, it also can't go in this cell. So this is the only place we can put one in this top central region, which rules one out of that cell. And now we get a one right here for this region. And the only place we can put a one in this region actually, because of these three ones is going to be right here. And we have a one up here at the top of this column. So that's going to be a one. And I think that that might be all of the ones in our puzzle. So these are going to be from three, five, six, and nine. And these guys can't be three because there's already a three living in their region. I need a four in this region. I can't go in these cells because there's a four in this column. So that will be my four, which makes this four, five, six. So that rules out three, six as an option for these. So that's an eight and a four. And these two digits have to be three and seven. And because we have a seven in row two, we know what order those go in. Therefore, this can't be three and six. That's a four, eight pair. So my last three digits here are five, seven, and nine. And that doesn't do too much for me right now. Let's see. These digits, and there are other ways to see this, but this is how I first noticed it, in this region are three, five, six, and nine. And so first of all, that's a naked three because there's a five, six, and nine in the row already. And that means that these two cells have to contain our last two digits in the column, which are seven and eight. So I can put those in. Here, this can't be a nine, and I need four, five, six, there, there, and there. These are going to be seven and eight. That can't be a four because there's a four in the row. That also can't be a four. So this is the only place I can possibly put a four in this region. Now, four is not next to a six, so that has to be either three or five. And interestingly, I'm not sure I get more than that out of that deduction at the moment. 
Oh, there's a four in this kind of squiggly region down here. I'm not sure how long that's been there, but this is definitely not a four. So that's an eight. And it must be consecutive with a seven or nine. And now I have an eight looking into this region. So eight is going to be in one of these two cells. And that's just something kind of neat. I have eights here, I have eights here. So that forms an X-wing on eights, ruling eight out of all of the other cells in their columns, because both of the eights in those two columns is, are already accounted for. And if we look at the effect that that has on this region, we also can't put an eight here because of this eight. So this now has to be an eight. This can't be a four because I have a four in the row. That means this is the only position for four in the column. So this must be a three and a six. So I can rule out three and five here and six here. And this must be three, five, or nine. I have a three in the column already. So it's not a three. And this is the only place where I can put a three in row three. Okay, that's now a five. And I have a six or a seven right here. So this can't be a seven. I can also rule out five from that cell and five from this cell. That gives me a seven, nine pair. So this is now my five. And these guys have to be three and nine to finish the row. That makes this a four and an eight. And then these guys are going to be five and six to finish off this column. I need to place an eight in this region somewhere. It can't go in column seven because it already has an eight. So that's an eight. And then this is either a seven or a nine. That can't be a six because there is a six in the row. That can't be a five. There is already a five in the column. These are from three, six, seven, and nine, and that's not a three because there is a three in its row already. So one of these must be a three. That's the only place we can put a three in the column. So that's not a three. This isn't a nine because it does see a nine in its region. And in fact, if we look at row six right here, the only place that doesn't see a nine by sharing a region with it or um, sharing a column with it is right here. So that makes this a nine. So that makes this a nine also. And I can also rule nines out of the cells that share with it. And I have a five in this region. So now I can fill these in. This can't be five or six, so that's a nine. This can't be three or six, so it's a five. And to finish off this region, I'm going to need a three and a nine. And here I'm going to need a five and a seven. And I already have a five in row seven. So that's gonna be my seven. And I'm just using some Sudoku to simplify at this point. So I have a six, seven pair in this region, making this a three. That's now a nine and a three. The six in the row makes this a seven. And then six must be next to either five or seven. And there are several reasons it can't be next to a seven here. So that makes this a five and an eight and a four. The six resolves my mysterious six, seven pair. And this is now an eight and a seven. I have a five in the column now. I have a six in the region. And my last digit in this puzzle is going to be a six. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's short day long puzzle. I'm not sure that I um, even single hatted that. I'll have to check what the times were that he gave it. That was a little bit of a challenging one for me, at least to talk about while I was solving. I hope you guys did enjoy that one. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, the link to try it yourself is in the description below this video. And I will see you with another puzzle in three days.